friends, welcome to the 26th Sunday in Ordinary Time. And once again, uh, thank you for viewing our weekly video reflection. You know, we are given with this beautiful gospel from the Gospel of Luke, uh, portraying two characters who are very contrasting. The first character is a rich man who dressed in purple garments and fine linen and dined sumptuously each day. And he is contrasted by a poor man by a poor man lying at his door covered with sores who would gladly have eaten his fill of the scraps that fell from the rich man's table. I'm sure we've heard this uh, gospel hundreds of times already, but I think today this gospel uh, invites us to reflect and hopefully deepen our, our appreciation and, and understanding of the concept of holiness. What, what, this, what is holiness? And what does it mean to be holy? And I'm sure you can find hundreds of definitions, but allow me to offer you a simplified definition of, of holiness. You know, holiness for me uh, has two moments. The first moment is, is that uh, holiness is a journey, is a path that we as uh, disciples of Christ, we take this path every day, every moment of every day, we are called to be holy, like, like Christ is holy. And it is in this journey that we are expected, it demands uh, efforts, uh, cooperation from us, that, you know, in, in ways that we exert efforts to go to, to be solicitous, to enrich our spirituality by going to church or by, by giving charities and, and helping others, so many, so many ways. This is, this are what's happening in this path of holiness. There's also another moment. This, this other moment is what I call this state of holiness or an experience of holiness, which in itself is a gift, completely a gift, meaning it is not by virtue of how many times we go to church, how many times or how much generous we were, and it's, it, 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 we cannot attain that such a gift of holiness by our own effort because that experience that state of holiness, it is, it is a gift. Now, from, from, the, from the gospel, we see here uh, the way it is being portrayed by the gospel of Luke that the rich man sounds like, you know, he is unmindful, unmindful of the situation. I mean, he lives like a very comfortable life and uh, all his uh, securities he has, but somehow he is unmindful of what's going on outside, actually right at his door, that there is a man in dire need. Now, a journey, our journey to holiness is not in a vacuum. It is not something that, oh, this is just my journey. This is not, oh, I go to church, I go to church. Oh, I give charity, I give charity for myself. Oh, oh I do this. And No, it is not a lonesome journey. Um, a journey of holiness it's not only, I know some of us would say, oh, Father, I love to go to a pilgrimage. I spend, I save money, I spend money, and I go to Israel and other places to spend, uh, to do this uh, pilgrimage. Yes, of course, this contributes to, to deepen your spirituality. Oh, Father, I go to a retreat, and I go to this room, a beautiful room, and there's this Bible, and there's this chapel. I pray. Of course, this helps. This helps to, uh, to deepen our spirituality, and thus contributes to our journey to holiness, this personal reflection. But again, the journey of holiness, it does not happen in a vacuum. The journey of holiness happens in a very concrete life, a very a concrete situation in relationship, concrete situation with the social issues, with the social situations we are in. So that is why holiness is the ways in which how we live that life in a very creative way and responsible way on how to and how we respond to the people in need of around us. Okay, we, it's not a it's not a solo journey. Uh, again, this rich man is things like life is what you make it. Life is you know you just have to be uh, as long as you don't hurt others as long. But he was he missed the point that you know, holiness because what happens is that he goes to hell right and uh, Lazarus is cuddled by Abraham or God the Father in, in heaven. So in in a sense. What the rich man was doing, not being mindful of the people around him, did not really uh, give him the reward that he thought he was going to receive. So this is what uh, a path of holiness is for our lives. 
We cannot claim to be holy. We cannot claim that we have a meaningful uh, uh, journey of holiness if we are if we are unmindful of the situation of your marriage for example if there is no reconciliation there is no forgiveness there is no humility there is no conversation if your relationship is you know your relationship in your family is needs some attention relationship with others so journey of holiness is we are in the concrete situation and context of our relationship and also with the people we cannot claim uh, nor can we claim to be in a meaningful journey of holiness and and if we are blind to the what's the people around us uh, the suffering the 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 oppressed and those who are victims of of indignities so many in, and so we cannot pursue we cannot continue a meaningful journey of life if we are we if we are divorced from this situation so you know in a, in a sense uh, a, a, a meaningful journey of holiness is really how am I being responsive? How am I being solicitous? Because at the end of the day, remember at the end of the day in, a, in a, another gospel in Matthew where Jesus says, did you clothe me when I was naked? Did you visit me uh, when I was ill? Did you feed me when I was hungry? So dear friends, learning from the gospel that we just heard today, that you and I may continue a meaningful journey of holiness, mindful not just of ourselves, but also of our brothers and sisters. And uh, of course, we start in our own family. This is where a journey of holiness, where we learn, where we learn to be people of faith, to be people of hope, and to be people of love. Because again, the state of holiness, the experience of holiness, it's a gift that God can only give. Thank you very much.